This right here is the Nothing Phone 2A, Nothing's third smartphone and their first budget version of a phone even though it's not behaving like one in any case. And by budget I mean it's so much cheaper while still retaining most of the features you expect in a mid-tier smartphone. It is priced at a ridiculous price point of 329 euros and features a gigantic and I mean gigantic 6.7 inch 120Hz OLED screen, a 5000mAh battery, 2 times 50 megapixel cameras on the back called the eyes, I guess, their cliff lighting system and everything you could want in terms of software and performance without actually sacrificing almost nothing. Getting it out of the box, which you can actually see right here in all of its glory, taking a first look at the phone, it's pretty much impressive right from the get-go. The screen is set up with the screen protection right from the get-go as well, and holding it in your hands for the first time gives you two immediate clues. First, this phone is really well balanced in terms of weights, making this a device which is great in terms of holding it for a longer period of time. And second, it's completely made out of plastic. The whole back with its transparent design, which is the key aspect of nothing design philosophy is made out of a transparent plastic material, the same goes for the sides and all the buttons. And to be honest, coming from an iPhone 13 as my main phone in the last couple of years, this was quite a difference in haptics and handling since it is made out of aluminum and glass. But after one week of constant usage, it has become natural and absolutely normal to me. The playfulness of the design, showing you some of its internal components, having the different material finishes visible at all times and having small design details like the red square in the corner makes this thing one of my favorite phone designs ever. Except, um, and let's be honest here, the materials and the shell is the one part they actually cheapened out on and somehow I'm glad they did it right there and not on the internals. Since plastic isn't prone to cracking, I am fine with having a cheaper shell and the internal components are the much more important parts anyways. So give me a plastic casing over metal any day when the components inside the phone are top notch. Okay, but um, not everything is glorious on the inside and yeah, what got me at first was that the Phone 2A cannot be charged wirelessly, even though we have a simulated ribbon cable coil thingy on the back. And also the processor isn't the fastest and the most prominent as well. A lot of manufacturers have opted to use a Snapdragon CPU in their phones as the central unit that powers everything and nothing went for something different. The MediaTek Dimensity 7200 Pro 5G chip and 8 core 4 nanometer chipset. This is the same 4 nanometer process used in every other high-end smartphone chip and to my surprise it holds up quite well. And I don't mean this in terms of benchmarks since I really don't care about scientific results or increment number advantages. I'm talking about real world usage and performance and I'm really happy with how it actually performs in real life. It's fast, it's responsive and everything I've thrown at it so far it's just working. It's very smooth in day-to-day -day operations, opening up apps, switching between them, closing, sliding, using the camera and everything else there is just worked as it should. Now when it comes to the massive screen on the front, the first thing I actually noticed was the uniformity of the bezels around the edges. It's the same nice bezel conformity that is also on the iPhone 13 which I'm used to and lets my German heart actually bump a bit faster. Now the screen itself plays in a different league. It's a 6.7 inch OLED screen I said in the beginning and is my absolute favorite when it comes to the Nothing Phone 2A. This is the first time I'm really seeing and feeling the 120Hz refresh rate, even though I used the Nothing Phone 2 for two weeks prior to this. The screen itself can go down to 30Hz if needed to save some battery life and it has a peak brightness setting of 1300 nits, which is very bright in my opinion as well coming from the iPhone 13. Watching content on this screen, especially HDR content is gorgeous. Regular content is super nice and smooth and gaming on it was a blast and I had quite some fun using it, even though Homeworld on mobile is rather nah. And let's be honest here, I think this display is way too good to be in this price category, especially when we talk about being a 329 euro budget phone. And this in combination with color reproduction, the viewing angles in which it still stays true to life and the very small camera hole on the top makes this an even more unbelievable screen to be built into this phone and in no way subtracts from having a premium experience on a so-called budget phone. And let's not forget the underscreen fingerprint reader which to my surprise worked flawlessly right from the get-go and um, doing a very 
unscientific test. It worked 29 out of 30 times, just like it should. And yeah, that's not actually all there is to it. This was just beginning. Let's actually talk about the integrated speakers as an example. These give you great stereo sound that is perfect for showing someone a song or listening with your friends to your favorite tunes outside, even though, uh, yeah. And let's also quickly talk about the integrated battery, which clocks in at 5000 milliamps, which is quite massive for a budget phone as well. Using this as my regular phone, and uh, let's actually clear this up, I'm not a power user, so, so, so there's no edit editing on the phone or any other extensive usage. In the last week or so I only had to recharge the phone every second day. And since this has a fast charge function with up to 45 watts, the phone was full from 0 to 100% or close to 0 in roughly 60 minutes. So lunch break charging and off you go for another two days. That's pretty much incredible for, as I said before, a goddamn budget phone. Before we take a look at the cameras on the back side, Let's quickly take a look at Nuffin's OS version 2.5, which is a custom shell on top of a stock Android version. In my opinion, this feels much like a reshelled and designed stock Google Android that got added with a few custom apps and uh, no bloatware at all, except if you count the Nuffin X app for the connection to the earbuds as bloatware. Customization wise, the phone is rife with things to be changed by you from different icon packs that can be downloaded, which actually forces every single icon app to be uniform in terms of design, which uh, makes this phone super unique and design wise even more gorgeous, to creating AI wallpapers and mix ups of the designs, to further going into detailing your home screen with a plethora of widgets, getting rid of or adding more of the stock Android experiences, and much more. It's a super flexible way of making the phone specifically tailored to your needs and your way of expressing yourself through the screen. So, in terms of usability and versatility, this is a great phone. And to add a little cherry on top of the already really neatly stuffed cake, when when you've ordered the Nothing Phone 28 through Nothing's website, you get a one year pro subscription of the new AI search engine Perplexity on top. Now, I've only used this for the last two to three days before this review, and right now I'm absolutely no expert, of course not, in using it. But man, this is a whole new topic for a separate video, I guess. But let me quickly sum this up before we get back to the phone itself. First, you can use it absolutely for free. Pro just gives you a couple of features on top. Second, this is what I would actually call Google 2.0 after two to three days of usage. It's a real-time information search engine that is combined with AI conversational tools that is very precise. It gives you citations of the sources it picked its data from, it understands actually the question and the context behind what you've asked, and it can summarize all of the information you are asking for in a complete package directly on its site with links and videos to get even further into the topics if needed. And uh, you get the pro subscription for free through for free through purchasing the phone 2A. It's really intriguing and I'm going to post a video on it in more detail as soon as I understand its versatility and range a bit more. Now back to the phone 2A. The last thing on my list is the cameras. And no, I did not forget the glyph lighting on the back, but to be honest, I didn't care much about it and haven't used it more than two to three times in my whole week of testing this phone. And mostly I only got flashes of them while having the phone sitting right next to me when some kind of message popped up and I was like, huh? Huh. It's fine, I guess, but nothing noteworthy in my opinion, at least to me, but I'm pretty sure that others out there really could get quite into it when you are more busy and more active with using your phone as your primary source of communication or as your business tool. Now cameras. We have two 50 megapixel cameras on the back and a 32 megapixel camera on the front. Both backside lenses are nicely placed smack dab in the middle of the upper phone part, housed in a neatly designed small half transparent bulk. I like the design of the lenses. I really like the placement in the middle and I really enjoy the images coming from both lenses. One is a normal lens, the other one is an ultra wide. Color, contrast, sharpness are all very nice for being a smartphone camera. Not over processed like in many other phones, but natural looking. Of course, the main camera is a bit better than the ultra wide, less noise in the image, it's a tad sharper overall but this is quite normal when it comes to lenses on smartphones. There is no optical zoom in both lenses, but a digital crop in, but, um, but let's be honest once more. Who is actually cropping in on a tiny digital sensor anyways? And when it comes to the front-facing camera, I like what 
it actually does to my selfies, which I'm only shooting for this video since I way too often see myself when recording videos for YouTube, like right now. So all in all, the cameras are nice and much better than I expected it to be on a budget phone. And now, doing my final conclusion on this phone after a week of using it as my daily driver, this pretty much sums up my whole experience. Everything is better than I expected it to be on a budget phone. Of course, 329 euros aren't, and um, excuse this pun right here, nothing. But in my opinion, this is the best nothing I can get for almost, well, nothing. It's the best budget phone you can get right now, and overall I have almost no complaints with the device. Of course, yeah, the shell could have been a bit better. I would have loved a wireless charging and the CPU is not the fastest out there, but let's be honest, for a final time in this review, who actually cares? The display is fantastic. The software is super easy to use and customize. The battery is well equipped for all of your daily usage. And in my opinion, this is the best phone you can get for 329 euros and probably even a tad more, maybe even up to 500. It's nothing's best phone so far in terms of price to performance value. As always, my name is Leech and I'm off writing the next scripts. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to subscribe to this channel. There are plenty more of this type of content and many other things available for you to watch. Have a great day. See you around and goodbye.